Men dream of women. Women dream of themselves being dreamt of. Men look at women. Women watch themselves being looked at. Women constantly meet glances which act like mirrors, reminding them of how they look or how they should look. Behind every glance is a judgment. Sometimes the glance they meet is their own, reflected back from a real mirror. A woman is always accompanied, except when quite alone, and perhaps even then, by her own image of herself. While she is walking across a room, or weeping at the death of her father, she cannot avoid envisaging herself walking or weeping. From earliest childhood, she is taught and persuaded to survey herself continually. She has to survey everything she is and everything she does, because how she appears to others, and particularly how she appears to men, is of crucial importance for what is normally thought of as the success of her life. A woman in the culture of privileged Europeans is first and foremost a sight to be looked at. What kind of sight is revealed in the average European oil painting? There were portraits of women as there were portraits of men, but in one category of painting, women were the principal ever-recurring subject. That category was the nude. In the nudes of European painting, we can discover some of the criteria and conventions by which women were judged. We can see how women were seen. What then is a nude? In his book on the nude, Kenneth Clark says that being naked is simply being without clothes. The nude, according to him, is a form of art. I would put it differently. To be naked is to be oneself. To be nude is to be seen naked by others and yet not recognized for oneself. A nude has to be seen as an object in order to be a nude. In the European oil painting, nakedness is not taken for granted as in archaic art. Nakedness is a sight for those who are dressed. That is why Manet's painting, which really marks the end of the period I'm considering, is so profound a comment on all the works which preceded it. The story begins with the story of Adam and Eve as told in Genesis. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, 
and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And she gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And the Lord God called unto the man and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Unto the woman God said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Two things are striking about this story. They become aware of being naked, because as a result of eating the apple, each sees the other differently. Nakedness is created in the mind of the beholder. The second striking fact is that the woman is blamed and is punished by being made subservient to the man. In relation to the woman, the man becomes the agent of God. In medieval art, the story is often illustrated scene following scene, as in a strip cartoon. During the Renaissance, the narrative sequence disappears and the single moment, which is nearly always depicted, is the moment of shame. The couple wear fig leaves or make a modest gesture with their hands. But now their shame is not so much in relation to one another as to the spectator. It is the spectator's looking which shames them. Later, as painting became more secular, many other subjects offered the opportunity of painting nudes. But always in the European tradition, the nude implies an awareness of being seen by the spectator. They are not naked as they are. They are naked as you see them. Often, as with the favorite subject of Susanna and the Elders, this is the actual theme of the picture. We join the Elders to spy on her. She looks back at us, looking at her. Sometimes the woman, Susanna, looks at herself in a mirror, picturing to herself how men see her. She sees herself first and foremost as a sight, which means a sight for men. Thus, the mirror became a symbol of the vanity of women, yet the male hypocrisy in this is blatant. You paint a naked woman because you enjoy looking at her, you put a mirror in her hand, and you call the painting vanity thus morally condemning the woman whose nakedness you have depicted for your own pleasure, and thus, incidentally, repeating the biblical example by blaming the woman. 